All right. Hello, hello. Let's see if we can get this thing running. Hi, Mom. So, let's see. Camera one, camera two, camera three, camera one. All right, all right. <clears throat> so everybody, welcome, uh, bear with me. I will be figuring some things out as we go along here. Let's see if this works. I hear audio, that's good. Okay, it's working. I can turn this down now. So I do have my phone here um, so I can read comments a little easier than on the, the screen that's further away. So I'm not uh, ignoring anyone, I'm actually trying to watch. My mom is watching, hi mom. She's up in Lake Havasu. Nathan, what's up? All right, guys, so we got a new system here at Turner's Warehouse. Uh, I tried it last night, so a few people were, caught me uh, messing around on YouTube, trying out the cameras, because we've got a front camera, a side camera here, and an overhead camera here. Although I still don't know how to point at these because it's so new. But anyway, I wanted to get a live stream in today because we had some cool uh, things to talk about. The, the big news at Turner's is this week we got our record power shipment from the UK. So we've got some amazing lathes and turning tools and all kinds of stuff. So you've probably seen some posts about that. I won't bore you guys with it here. I am turning on a record power Herald today. And this is my favorite lathe at the moment. It's a small compact machine that I can turn a 24 inch bowl on if I want. Believe it or not, this thing is a beast. And it's a one and a quarter spindle, which is nice for chuck size and all that. But we still use it for little teeny tiny stuff, as you'll see in future demos, pen turning, everything. So it's really cool. But today, I wanted to talk about um, turning my car to pen blanks. Hey, Charles, you made it home. Charles was just in here. So anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about turning my car to pen blanks. Now, if you guys are familiar with my carta, some of this will be a repeat. But if you're not, this will be a little kind of introduction. These are just a few of the micarta pen blanks that we have at Turner's. These are all made for us by Ken Frisbee in Florida. Ken does an amazing job. He makes knife scales for us, pen blanks. Uh, he could probably make anything we ask out of micarta, and the quality is phenomenal. These things, not only, I mean, they don't even look like it. These are, keep in mind, these are all fabric. Everything you see here is fabric. A lot of cloth, a lot of blue jean material. This red one here is burlap, and we have different colors of burlap. And what it is, is it's all compressed fabric into resin. So it's usually epoxy resin. Uh, I don't even know what Ken uses, but whatever he uses, it works, so. But these are amazing blanks. We have so many cool colors of these crazy kind. We got three or four or five colors of burlap. We've got all the red line, blue line. We have straight up blue jean color that are really cool. And recently Ken sent us this black and white, which I've made a few knife handles out of this black and white and it was really, really cool. So I figured let's make a pen. This is the first pen I'm making with the black and white. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, mom, fabric. I will be raiding your sewing room to get fabric to make my carta. There we go. Now, the micarta is really cool, but it does have a couple of challenges, a couple of things you want to know about when you're doing it. Um, no matter how good or bad it's made, it's still fabric with resin. So fabric doesn't necessarily want to be drilled. It doesn't necessarily want to be turned. So there's a few key things you need to do to make sure you have a successful turn with this. And I will show you what I do, and it seems to work pretty good. Although, now that I say that, anytime you're doing a live stream, what happens, you blow something up, right? So 
we'll see what happens. But it's still fabric when you boil it down. So you gotta take a little extra care. You can't turn this like a piece of wood, you know, just go at it nonstop. You gotta be a little more careful than that and a little more precise. Now, what I like to do, this was my blank, I cut it to length, and you can see this is darker here. Make sure I get it under the camera. Uh, you can see it's darker than the rest of the blank because I, I coated this and soaked it in CA. So I not only soaked it once I cut it, the ends, I soaked that in CA, then I drilled my hole, then I soak both open sides. Imagine like end grain versus side grain. I like to do the end grain, so to speak, so it soaks through the blank and it soaks down in there. So this is my CA covered, CA filled blank, and then I've got my tube in there. Now I CA the end before I drilled it, I CA the end after I tubed it with the, the glue, and that's just a little extra assurance. I left this little bit here from when I was squaring it, you can see it's frayed a little bit, and that will happen, and that'll happen if you just never put CA on it, you'd have a little more fraying than, than I will with the CA because the CA just keeps it stronger and, and harder together. I always say with these, uh, with a lot of things, CA is cheap insurance. So, you know, if I've got a $12 blank and I put 15 cents worth of CA on it to make sure it turns pretty good, that's a pretty good return on my CA. And I know I'm setting myself up here for a disaster, but I haven't had these explode in a long, long time because of the CA thing. Now that could all change, but you never know. But anyway, we're gonna turn this and I'm gonna just kind of show you as I go, but check us out for these really cool blanks, all kinds of cool colors and styles. I actually, I actually stole this from Tim right before the live stream started. Tim Wadley that works here turned this one. This is the crazy, green and blue. I don't know if it's reflecting badly. But he turned this one with a nice CA finish. This is our field click. This pen is gorgeous. So I grabbed this from him to show you all. But we have a few on display in the showroom. Uh, but I mean, we're carrying these too. It's something we like that much that we carry these around with us. But that's just one example. So not to repeat, but CA, CA, CA. <clears throat> Coat that thing in CA on the front, coat it on the ends before you drill. After you put your tube in and glue it in, a little more thin CA, then square it up, and you are good to start. Now, this is a field click, so it's a little bit longer than, say, a Sierra or a Bolt, but it's not super, super long. So I'm gonna turn this. I'm using a mandrel with the mandrel saver. This is a old, loud, Listen to that thing roll. Old, loud mandrel saver, so bear with me on that. But um, what you're gonna see is I'm going to put CA on this several times throughout the turning. So I'm gonna get this thing up close. And I'm gonna start up my lathe. And I'm gonna turn this thing pretty fast. I've got it at 3,400 uh, RPMs. I'm just going to touch it and lock it. And I'm going to turn this thing pretty quick. And I'm actually going to start off. I chipped my square carbide tool yesterday and I forgot to change it till just now. So I'm going to start off with this round cutter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut the ends like this. I'm going to go in and out and then I'm going to go the other way, in and out. And I just want to kind of get the ends started round. And you can see the dust that's on my hand here. This is, uh, this is that cloth. This is all fabric. It's fabric and CA, basically. And if you all have any questions, feel free to, to post them. I may not see them during now, but I'll try to go back and answer any questions. Uh, you can always call the shop or email us, any of that kind of stuff. But you can see here where it's starting to round the blank, that's just open fabric. So I go from the CA covered hard part to soft fabric. Now I don't mean soft like it's 
soft because there's epoxy in it, but you can still feel the cloth in there. So that's what's, that's what's so hard about turning my card is you're exposing cloth when you turn it. So even though I got a chipped tool here, I'm gonna go ahead and use my square. This will help me get the ends squared off or rounded off. And you could have, this thing just rolls and rolls. I'm even slowing it down. You could have uh, rounded this on a sander. That would have probably really helped. Um, but you're seeing the dirty, rough and dirty here. I feel like I got this good. Chris, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Good, good. Having fun? Guys, I've got Chris here. Come on in, Chris, and say hello. Chris helped me get the Streamlabs set up. Chris has been here a couple months now. Yeah. And he's a streamer, so he was able to help me set up the stream. It's fun stuff. Thanks, Chris. All right. All right. So, um, what I was saying was, you you want to round it, or you? I could have sanded it. That was what I was getting at before I got sidetracked, which, <laughs> which I do. Uh, you could have sanded it round, which would really speed up the process and make it a little easier. Obviously I didn't do that so you guys can see the real rough turning of this. But as I start to expose all this grain, so to speak, in the, the uh, blank, I'm gonna coat it in CA. But I'm gonna real quick take off the top here. So I put my lathe up to 3800. Once I take off the initial square edge, it should be a lot smoother. And I really should wear a face mask. This is pretty dusty. But what you'll see now is all of our corners will be knocked off and we're just gonna have some exposed cloth. So you can see from the dark to the light, that's the exposed layers. And now what I wanna do is start applying some CA. And I don't need a lot, but I call it cheap insurance. I'm just gonna let it drip and let it soak in real quick here. And this will just help hold those areas together. I like to let it sit for just a sec and then I'll spray it with accelerator. While that sits, I'm gonna grab my RZ mask. So you think you think of everything to have it ready, but of course, forget <laughs> something. Probably because I was wearing a mask when I was setting up. So I'm only wearing this because this fabric with the CA and the epoxy gets really dusty. So still a little bit of CA on there. So I'll hit it with my accelerator, cure it up. And now I like to turn, I like to turn ends. So I go from one side out, get it down to size. The other side out, get it down to size. CA those, and then I'll do the middle. So you'll see the blank will kind of look like this. All right.
Seems hot. Yeah, that thing is really dusty. <laughs> it's probably because there's so many layers of material here and then all the CA. So this is the two ends. So I still had this, this solid wrap of CA in the middle this whole time, which helps keep that together. Now if I want to work in the middle, I can CA the ends and then go back and do, do the middle. And the other benefit to this is it will only help my finish if I have CA soaked into the material because it'll be a little smoother, it won't be as porous. And I'm gonna do a CA finish on it so it'll shine up better, which makes sense. So I'm using accelerator, uh, mercury, along with mercury thin. That's the glue I use for this process. Let that cool up a little bit. Not cool up, cure up. All right. Things <laughs> jumping on me. Look at this dust. It's quite a cloud. Jeez. You would not want to breathe this. Man, that thing's screaming. So as we get down, you'll start to see the pattern that you're gonna end up with. This is a really cool, it's so tight this thing, but you can see the side there, and then there's the end. It almost looks like Damascus, the way yeah. this is layered. Doesn't that look like a chunk of Damascus, like layered in there? It's pretty cool. So you can see that, um, let's see. That's pretty cool. But now as we go, I just want to kind of keep this saturated real lightly and I'm just turning it to shape. And then I can, once it's down to size, I can sand it and polish it just like any other CA blink. So that's kind of cool. Let me go. I had uh, Facebook up, I didn't have YouTube up, so I'm not sure what we've got going on here. Okay, Rick Troop. Uh, Rick, I just saw your comment. This carbide cutter is terrible because it's old. <laughs> it's old and needs to be replaced. And last night I dropped it and broke off this corner. I don't know if you can see it. But it is totally my fault, but I started the stream and didn't want to go switch it. Um, but yeah, it is, I'm turning with a butter knife here practically. Let me see if I got a Hmm. 
I don't know where my little Allen wrench is for this, but yeah. Oh, here. I think I've got another. Even though, so this is a uh, number one hollower, but this little carbide guy is a beast. And since my square is all chipped and broken, this will be a lot better. So let's see how much better this cuts. Oh my gosh, <laughs> night and day. Can you see how much smoother that is? Now, of course, if you were just turning, you know, for fun, you would stop and switch your cutter out. But since I went live, I thought it would be smart to just go for it. But that was not smart. This is much better. Um, so even the number one hollower is better than my broken square tool. All right, actually, before this starts, this will probably be this will probably be my last application of the thin CA on top because from here I can get to the turn the completed size. So I'm just really gently drizzling. I just want to soak in really well, and you can see I'm kind of staying away from the ends. I don't want to glue my bushings to the tube, so I'm getting close, but not all the way to the end. So, put that on. If you guys hear music in cars, the, uh, there's cars right outside our back door for, <laughs> the DUI checkpoint is a couple doors down. So we get some real characters in here. They like to complain about us being here. All right, let's do it. Oh my gosh. So, look, I got ribbons even. Yeah. My other tool couldn't even cut a ribbon. I'm just cutting dust. So that's a lesson. Don't cut with crappy tools. So much smoother. So that was a lesson for you all about using a dull cutter. Uh, that number two looks so much better. And it cuts so much faster and smoother, imagine that. So here's our blank. Pretty cool looking. Hard to believe it's fabric, right? There's the original. And there's the blank. Now we got this, uh, this particular blank in several colors, but this black and white looks so cool and I'll probably put it on a gunmetal or a black uh, enamel kit once I'm done because it'll just match really well. So we are now on to finishing and I'm gonna do a CA finish on this. So normally you'd wanna clean up a little bit, but we're okay. Now I'm going to use Mercury Flex. Mercury Flex is a finish made for CA finishing. It, uh, 
It works really well, obviously. Hey, Chris. Um, see if you can get a, li a dead center. Do you know what a dead center is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See if there's one in that tub right there. There's like a bunch of tools in a little thing. It'll be a pointed black piece of metal. What I'm doing is Chris is looking for my dead center because I forgot to grab it. Uh, if it's there, maybe it's over here. Would you ask Tim if he could uh, look for it? Yeah. Yes, that first one on this side. Yep, that one. Never mind. Don't need Tim. Uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do is, thank you, sir. You're welcome. I'm going to put in the dead center. Because I like to do CA without bushings because it's really easy to glue your bushings in. And so if you can do it without them, it's nice. So, get that in there. And we just want to kind of sneak up on this guy. Lock it down. All right. Now, CA, a lot of people make CA a lot harder than it needs to be. Um, you want to turn your speed down for one thing. You want to... Uh, make sure your layers are real evenly. You don't want big balls of CA at the end of your blank or gluing the blank to the tools. I like to run about 700, which feels really slow, but I mean, still turning 700 RPMs. And I just use paper towel. Uh, like I said, I'm using Flex Mercury. Now Flex has to be used with Accelerator. The flex glue is made to be part of the excel with the accelerator because it helps it cure. This stuff will take a long time to cure if you don't use accelerator. So if I have thin CA, which I don't have any with me right now, I'll put a thin coat down and that'll really soak. Actually, what I can do is I'll use regular thin, not flex. And that'll just be my soak coat. It'll get into the, geez, I'm all dusty. <laughs> It'll get into the blank here. And you'll see, you'll see the blank get darker, obviously, because liquid is soaking into it. And I don't want to keep that on there too long. If I keep pushing on this, I'm going to glue this to my blank, and then I get to cut it off. And you can see this is smoking, but it's already hard. See, my paper towel is hard. That's how quick it is. The friction and the thin CA is, you know, goes off quick, so it's... This thing is rock hard already. So I don't have to spray this one. Now if it was thin CA, or if it was thin flex, it would still be a little soft, or could be, so I'd want to spray it. I'm going to spray it just in the habit here. Tear off another piece. I just fold them to where I don't get the CA on my fingers. So I'm going to put a line and then a coat. And that's kind of it, on and off, on and off. What I see a lot of people do when they're making this harder is they load up their paper towel, they push it all over, and then they wipe it all off. So they're, they're imagine like a flowing liquid, it's floating on the blank, and then they go whoop and just push it all to the side. So you don't want to do that. You want to kind of like gently float the finish on here. Now that's already hard because I did have some residual accelerator. Oh, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. But this, I can use this next part of the towel because I've only, I've only hardened the bottom part here. So I'm just going on and across. And that's it. And I like my CA, when I'm done applying four or five coats, I like it to look like, kind of like an orange peel feel. Not necessarily perfectly flat, because you just can't get it perfectly flat, but have that little tiny ripple. That way I know there's a buildup of it. Hot rod. Hot rodders. So last one here. And if I think I've got on the end, I can always dab it off. Because the ends are, are squared off. They should be 
square if I've got a bunch of CA in there I need to take care of that before I sand and polish it. So I think that was number three. We'll do four just for good measure. Alright. And then spray. Now I should be able to see this and it should feel like fairly even. I shouldn't feel the texture of the blank, but I should feel the texture of the glue because I kind of went up and down. Now I'll spin this a little faster for a minute. Not that this, I don't know that this does a thing, but it's just how I do it, so I will do it. But I'll let this spin for just a minute. Grab the cap here. And I'm done with that. All right. So once you're done applying the CA, it's very, very simple. Now see, this feels hard when I touch it. It doesn't feel tacky at all. It doesn't feel sticky. It's ready to go. Bring in my water. And I'm putting a board down because this lathe is still new enough that I try to keep it clean. <laughs> Once it gets older, I won't try as hard. Just back in the uh, tailstock up here. Oh, oh, fail. That's not good. <coughs> so, I just dropped the blank in the water. <laughs> Not ideal. Although, it's going to get wet anyway because I'm about to polish it. So I guess it doesn't matter, actually. But I wouldn't have soaked it. That wouldn't have been my <laughs> choice. Um, all right. So what I want to do, got my blank on here. I'm going to go back to 700. This is the, uh, the overcomplication again. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to use... 800 wet dry sandpaper and I use 800 uh, we sell a pack at Turner's of 600 and 800 and it's wet dry I always do everything wet even wood because I think the finish looks better so I'm going to just sand across here and I'm putting real light pressure I don't want to dig into this I'm not trying to sand the finish off if you remember the orange peel I was talking about all I'm trying to do is sand that flat so I just want this flat, okay? Now a real good thing to do, once you think you've kind of got it flat, I'm gonna get the ends here. Once you think you've got it flat, you wanna turn the machine off. And what you'll see is it's wet there. If I dry it, if I have shiny spots, I don't know if you can see it on there. Little shiny rings. Those are low spots. So anywhere that's dull, I sanded. Anywhere that's shiny is below the sandpaper. Does that make sense? Because So imagine, whoop, imagine your finish is like this and you sand up here. This is going to be dull and down here you didn't even touch with the sandpaper so it's shiny. So I got a tiny bit more sanding to do. Now again, I don't want to go through I don't want to go through my finish, I just want it flat. So I'm just going to keep gently sanding. And I can feel it's already different than the first time I stopped. And that white on the sandpaper, that's the, that's the glue coming off in the water right there. But if I pushed hard or went fast, I'd sand through that in no time. So I think I got one more little spot right here. It feels pretty good. All right, so let's see. So I'll try this again. Uh, looks pretty good. There's maybe one spot there. Looks pretty good overall though. I'm going to go ahead and proceed just so we can show everything here, but 
Uh, you know, you go back and forth, and if you do sand through the finish, that's not the end of the world. You just got to apply more CA. Uh, but now I'm going to go to my Zona paper. So I like the Zona paper. It uh, it's basically like micro mesh, only in a paper form. It comes in an eight and a half by eleven, and then I just cut these little squares out. Um, I like it for a couple reasons. One, I think it ends up polishing better when you go to the final paper. Two, it's only six sheets instead of nine. So, I mean, already that's a third of third less number I have to go through to get to the same result, or in this case, better. But it just is easier to use. It's, it's soft sheets instead of the foam pads, which I just like better. I think it feels better to sand with. So, Zona, you start with the first one. And we're about a thousand speed here. You wanna keep it wet. And then here, I'll try to, so I don't block the camera. Boop. You wanna keep it really nice and wet. And I'm just pushing up on it. Oh. Now that, what happened is I dropped it. Oh, it didn't get as dirty. A lot of times if you drop them, you gotta go rinse them off because they are real dirty, but it didn't get it too bad. So this will just, uh, this will just polish it. So if I had big ridges or low spots, Zona paper is not gonna do anything but make it shiny. It's not gonna take out scratches, scratches. It's not gonna, <laughs> time to go to the next one. It's not gonna take out scratches. It's not gonna change the shape. It's only gonna make it polished. All it is is polished paper. So you can already see even though it's turning, the shine's starting to come through on this. So normally, um, you know, it's the first couple of paper pages, ugh, papers that start to take the, the heavy amount off and then it gets finer and finer. But you can already see there's like shine glare, like the shine glare from the lights. And if I stop it, which I do like to stop it with wood and stuff and go long ways, but you can already see when I wipe the water off, it's getting shinier. So that grain or layers of, of fabric are really starting to shine through. And like I said, it's not gonna change the, the shape. It's just gonna polish it up. Okay, so here, real quick. Try to dry it off, my hands are wet. So you can kinda see it's shiny, but still has a dullness to it. Now wait till the end, you'll see how it's like a mirror finish. All right. Got to try to do this underhanded. Remember, keep it wet, keep it moving. I don't like to sit in any one spot the whole time. And the water just helps get that dust out of your way. It doesn't build up, it doesn't scratch your, your surface with your own pad. So I like to keep the tub of water below here. Some people will squirt it on or drip it on. I just find it to be convenient to have it. I can rinse my pad, I can get it wet, all in one place. All right. So this is our third sheet. We're going into the fourth here, the pink. Now this is where we'll really start to see if we were to turn it off and dry it off, we'll start to see the shine come up. I'm gonna turn this up just a hair. All right. Has anybody used Zona already? I mean, Zona's gotten really popular the last couple of years. I didn't know about it till I was at a little pen meetup and somebody showed it to me. I think it was John David Jones, actually. And uh, he said, hey, you gotta try this stuff, it's really good. And I was kinda like, nah. <laughs> I use MicroMesh, it's fine. But I actually, now this is all I use, I don't use MicroMesh at all. But there's nothing wrong with it, it's just different. So, last time here with the pink. And you kinda wanna go a little longer with each next pad, so you know, say you want 10 seconds with the first one, you would want to go maybe 20 seconds with the second and so on. 
there's no exact number, but it's just better to go a little further with each one, I think. That being said, I'm not counting. I'm just going until it looks good. All right. What do you think, Chris? Any questions? I'm just taking it all in. All right. Chris has been watching this, guys. He said he was hoping to see it blow up on me, but it didn't blow <laughs> up, so. Mom, are you still watching? Mom? My mom was watching. Again, guys, if you have uh, requests for live streams, videos, techniques, how to make something, uh, we've got a really cool staff here with uh, myself and Tim and Carrie. Chris is new, but he's gonna be getting involved in some of this. Diana likes to make a lot of rings. So we've got a lot of people on our staff that can uh, really help you get to the next level on certain things. So don't be uh, afraid to ask us to do a demo or a video on something because we'll probably do it. Especially now that we have a better setup. All right, do you remember the kind of dullness we had when we yeah. stopped? Okay, we're gonna go just a second here. This is our final micron, which is one micron, which isn't very many microns. I don't really know what a micron is, it's just small. Away from zero. Huh? Away from zero. Yeah, it's one away from zero. So, I mean, like, how many micron abrasive is your finger? Probably more than one. Maybe. You know what I mean? Like, Maybe that's two. that's pretty soft. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this now. Now, one thing I don't want to do is go through all this and then take a paper towel and like dry it all. Because what am I doing, Chris? Scraping it up. Scratching it up. But I will just kind of like wrap it just to get the water off. Or blot it, I guess. Now, does that look shinier than when we stopped it before? Because this is now dry, although it looks wet. Let me show you here. So this is a... CA finished micarta. Kind of looks like glass. You can see the reflection there. It's pretty cool looking. And I think that'll look really good on a black kit or a gunmetal kit. Might even look good on chrome because it has the white in it. But micarta is definitely something cool that you'll want to try. No need to be afraid of it. You just got to take your time. Uh, I know my demo was a little clunky because I haven't done a demo in a couple of months, <laughs> but you got the point of CA is your friend. CA is cheap insurance. Uh, yes. Any questions, guys? Throw them out there. Tim Wadley says my card is laminated fabric. That is correct. It is laminated fabric. In this case, it's, uh, I think this is cotton and canvas. I don't know. But like I said, we've got burlap. We've got blue jean material. Uh, it's very popular in knife making because micarta is so strong. They make it out of everything, paper, fabric, fiberglass. But you can see how you can get a really cool finish on a cloth blank. And it didn't really take that much or it wasn't that hard. You guys watch the whole process here. All I have left is to assemble this thing and it's ready to go. Whoops, wrong camera. <laughs> so. That is that. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Post them. Uh, this should be streaming on Facebook and YouTube, so we'll check both of them to answer any questions. You can always reach us at the store or give us a call. Any, let me see if there's any questions here before we go. Andrew says, great finish. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, my mom is still watching. Mom, look at that. My mom's a quilter, so she's got a lot of fabric, so... If I had more time, I could make a lot of fabric in my car to... Oh, can you see the chat on there too? Yeah. Oh, cool. We're just figuring this thing out, guys. It's uh, it's my second live stream. I did one last night just to try out the, the cameras and see if they work. Tim, you got anything for the group before we sign off here? No. Hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, chiming in and uh, indulging my little quips here and there. Oh, were you <laughs> chatting with them? A little bit, yeah. Oh. So. Come on in, Tim. You all know Tim. He's done several videos on the Turner's TV channel. Hi, Anita. Mom. <laughs> yes, my mom is still watching. San Antonio. Anxious to have you join us in June. What's in June? June? Nothing. I don't know anything about June. What's in June? I don't even know. 
we'll see how the shows pan out this year. It's been such a weird time. I'm, with I'm hoping SWAT happens. Yeah, SWAT, SWAT, hopefully, but we'll see. Um, all right, Chris, anything before we sign off here? Nothing. Micarta, cool stuff. Don't be afraid of it. Make it. It's cool. It's e it's much easier than you think it would be. Uh, I'm I'll give you your pen back live so you can't Thank say you. I took appreciate it. that. <laughs> I told him I took it from you in the beginning. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I've got. Unless there's any other questions. Yeah. Cliff says, "What's in Santa?" Oh, ring demo. Yeah, I forgot. I, I was thinking. Uh, I was going somewhere, but... Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, we're doing a live stream demo for the San Antonio Club. Oh, very cool. All right. All right, bye, Mom. Bye, Mom. <laughs> bye, everybody. Thanks.